We're busy looking at substitution and integration, and we're looking at some more examples, so we're just going to carry on and go for it. These first two are yet again examples that you could possibly do by inspection, but we're going to use substitution, and I'll show you what we're doing to do. In the first one, we've got 4 to the power 3x minus 2. Now, I know how to find the antiderivative of 4 to the power u, or 4 to the power x. That's one of our standard ones, so we need to know that, but let's see how we're going to do it with the 3x minus 2. I don't like the 3x minus 2, so I'm going to say let u be equal to 3x minus 2. du is then 3dx. Do I have a 3dx? No, I just have a dx. But that's okay. That's a third du. So once I substitute, this becomes a third, the integral of 4 to the power, 4 to the power u du. And that we can integrate. We know the antiderivative of 4 to the power u, which is 1 over lin 4 times 4 to the power u plus c. So if we change back to x, we've got 1 over 3 lin 4 times 4 to the power 3x minus 2 plus c. So especially when you start with integration, use substitution. Don't try and Look for shortcuts, use substitution, and then we can see that the answer works out nicely. And already remember, you can check it by differentiation. Next one, 1 over 5 minus 2x. <clears throat> Let u be equal to 5 minus 2x. du is minus 2dx. I don't have a minus 2dx, but I've got a, a dx. So minus a half du is dx. So if we go back to this integral, that's minus a half times the integral of 1 over u du. Hopefully you remember the integral of 1 over u. That is lin of the absolute value of u plus c. So we've got minus a half lin of the absolute value of 5 minus 2x plus c. You can differentiate to check that your answer is right. All right, now let's look at the next one. We've got to do a little bit of thinking here to see what we're going to do. I've got sine of lin x divided by x. So what I'm looking for is a function and its derivative present. Now there's a sine there. The derivative of sine is not there. All right. There's a 1 over x. What's the derivative of 1 over x? It's minus 1 over x squared. I don't see that there. There's a lin x. The derivative of lin x is 1 over x. Ah, there we go. So I say let u be equal to lin x. du is 1 over x dx. Do I have that? Yes, I've got it, 1 over x dx, so I can make my substitution. So that's the integral of sin of u. 1 over x dx is just du. So it's the integral of sine of u du. And what is that? That's minus cos of u plus the integration constant. So that's minus cos of lin x plus c. There we go. We had to think a little bit and remember, like I said, if you make your first substitution, if you pick a U and it doesn't work, draw a line through it and try again. All right, the next one. Lin is here again. It's 1 over 4x minus 2, lin 4x minus 2. Now, I already know that the derivative of lin of a function is 1 over that function, so that's another one of those. So I'm going to say let U be equal to lin of 4x minus 2. Du is then 1 over 4x minus 2 du, and a dx, and that is what I have present there, 1 over 4x minus 2 dx. So when I substitute, this whole part becomes du, so I'm left with 1 over lin of 4x minus 2, which is 1 over u, du. That simplified very quickly to something very usable. The antiderivative of 1 over u, we know is lin, the absolute value of u, plus c. So this is lin of the absolute value of, now u was lin of 4x minus 2. So I've got lin of lin of 4x minus 2 plus c. And yet again, you can differentiate to test your answer. All right, let's look at this one. x times e to the power minus 4x squared minus 2. Right, yet again, we've got an x times e to the power something. So we look at that and we go, it's not straightforward. I've got to do a bit of work. The ugly function I'm looking at is minus 4x squared minus 2x. Is that function's derivative present? Let's take a look. Now write it down because it's easier to see if we're writing down. 
Let u be equal to minus 4x squared minus 2. du is then minus 8x dx. Do I have a minus 8x? No, I've got a x dx though. So that's pretty nice. We just manipulate those constants. That's minus 8, 1 over 8 du. So there we go. So that's minus 1 over 8. The integral of x dx becomes du. So it's e to the power u du. And we love finding the antiderivative of e to the power u because it is just e to the power u. So we've got minus 1 over 8, e to the power minus 4x squared minus 2 plus c. All right, next one. We just keep rolling on ahead. I've got x minus 2, 6 squared. 2x squared minus 8x. All right. We know the antiderivative of 6 squared gets me to 10, but what have we got there? The function I notice that I want to get rid of is 2x squared minus 8x. Let's see. Can we get rid of it? du is then 4x minus 8dx. Do I have a 4x minus 8? Nope. I've got an x minus 2. Just as good. I take 4 out and I've got an x minus 2 dx. So 1 over 4 du is then x minus 2 dx, which I have. I've got an x minus 2 dx. So this is then the antiderivative. 1 over 4, doesn't matter if I write it in front of the integral or inside. That becomes du, so I've got sec squared u du. And I know the antiderivative of sec squared u is tan of u plus c. Take it back to x and I've got tan of 2x squared minus 8x plus c. All right, so for the last two examples we're going to look at two definite integrals because up to now it's just been indefinite integrals. So let's look at some definite integrals and how to deal with them because they work a little bit differently. You have got sine sin squared times cos from naught to power over 2. Now we had something similar earlier. So if I let u equal to sine of theta or sine of x, I know the derivative is there. du is cos x dx. So that's there. But now these limits of integration, they refer to x. They've got to do with x. Now I want to change everything to u. So I need to change those to u as well. So how do I do that? Well, as simple as that. If x is equal to naught, what does that tell me about u? u is sine of naught. What is sine of naught? It's naught. All right. If x is equal to pi over 2, what does that say about u? u is going to be sine of pi over 2. What's sine of pi over 2? That's 1. So now we can change everything. So that becomes the integral from naught to 1. So these were referring to x. My new numbers refer to u. So now everything changes to u u squared du. All right, so that's 1 over 3, u to the 3 between 1 and 0, which gives me 1 over 3 minus 0. And there we go. So now notice we didn't change it back to x because it's a definite integral, which gives me a value, a real value. So there we go, a third. The integral from 0 to 2 of x over x squared plus 2. So we can see there's an x and there's an x squared plus 2. So we see the derivative of x squared plus 2 is there. So we say let u be equal to x squared plus 2. du is then 2x dx. I don't have a 2x dx, but I've got an x dx. It's close enough. That is then just a half du. Now, I wanted to make the substitution, but I looked at this and I said, oh, wait a minute, it's a definite integral. So, if x is equal to 0, what does that say about u? u is then 0 squared plus 2, so it's 2. If x is equal to 2, u is substituted back in. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. So, this becomes the integral from 2 to 6. That is du, there's a half. 1 over u du. We can take the half out. What is the antiderivative of 1 over u? Well, it's lin u. So it's lin absolute value of u between 6 and 2. 
So this is a half times lin 6 minus lin 2. And we drop the absolute value because we know 6 and 2 are both, both positive. So there we go. So that is how we do definite integrals. And in general, we've seen a lot of examples now on how to use substitution in integration.